Hey y'all, in this video lesson, I'm going to teach you how to do transformations on the graphs of tangent, cotangent, cosecant, and secant. Before we get into cotangent, uh, let's first talk about tangent. The period of tangent, so if you can envision that graph, we have asymptotes at three pi over two or negative pi over two and pi over two. And then we have this nice graph in between. So we have one full wave, we could say, in a span of pi. And cotangent has different asymptotes, but the same length of the wave. So the period for tangent and cotangent is pi. And then the period for cosecant and secant, since they're, since they're related to cosine and sine, they're going to have that same period of 2 pi. And then um, this is just a little generic formula for tangent here. In the previous video, I had a nice little summary where we stated that A was the amplitude, B was the frequency, this is a horizontal shift, this is a vertical shift. And now instead of the period being two pi over the frequency, now it's just pi over the frequency, only for tangent and cotangent, okay? That's only for those. So for all the other trig functions, cosecant, secant, sine, and cosine, they have a period of two pi. We just have to take into consideration these asymptotes here for tangent and cotangent. Um, if you missed that, this was amplitude, frequency, horizontal shift, and this was vertical shift. And remember also this was the mid line in case you missed that video. Okay, um, for secant and cosecant, we are going to have some asymptotes because remember they're the reciprocal functions. So if you have one over sine or one over cosine, where sine or cosine are zero, that's where asymptotes are. So for secant and cosecant, we are going to have asymptotes, but one full wave is going to be um, an upwards U and a downwards U just to encompass that full picture. So we do include the asymptotes for that specific, for those specific cases, um, but I just wanted to state that before we go down into the next examples. So I have two examples here. We are not drawing them or sketching them. We're just stating the amplitude, period, frequency, phase shift, and vertical translation. So for this first example, we have cotangent. And so we need to consider the period for tangent and use that for cotangent. So this has, uh, we can label this. If that helps, it helps me, I like to label. So this is going to be a vertical shift. This is going to be an amplitude. This is going to be a frequency. It doesn't look like there's going to be any horizontal shift because I don't have uh, anything plus or minus inside of parentheses. So I don't need to worry about that there. So this has an amplitude of one third, a frequency of two, and then I'm going to just go ahead and state the period is pi over the frequency. And then the uh, there's no horizontal shift. The vertical shift is down 1. Did I get everything? Amplitude, period, frequency, phase shift, vertical shift. So I think I got everything. If it helps, you can label these instead with the letters that we used up above on that, at the top line on the page here. Uh, amplitude is A, frequency is B. The vertical shift was C and period. How was that labeled? Sorry, let me go up two pi over B. So I guess I, or two pi, yeah, over B. Oh, pi over b. Sorry about that, because this is cotangent. So it's pi, not two pi. For the next one, 
five times cosecant of four times X plus pi. So I want you to find all the pieces, pause it, try it, come back and check your work. You should have gotten an amplitude of five, that's the number in front of cosecant, a frequency of four, that's the number behind cosecant. So this is amplitude frequency. Period is, since this is cosecant, we are using two pi. We're saying one full wave completes in a two pi span. So that's two pi over the frequency and then go ahead and reduce. And then this does have a horizontal shift. It's plus pi, so that means we're gonna go left pi and no vertical shift. So that's all we have to do for these. No drawing, no sketching. You can if you want to, but that's that's all we're doing. We're just kind of breaking it apart. All right, in the next one, we are given the graph, and then we're going to still find each piece that we're looking for. In this one, we do have an added thing of the midline, and then I did that because the midline is going to help you find the amplitude and all the other things. So pause it, try it, come back. On mine, I did, I drew some things here to kind of help you hopefully visualize what's going on. Uh, I drew the bold pink line as the midline. And I found that by counting the spaces between the bottom of this U to the top of this U. And there were six spaces between, which meant that I'm gonna have to go either up three or down three to find that midline. So that cuts it in half. And then from the midline to the next height or whatever is three and also three here. So in either case, we have a height of three. So that gives us our amplitude. Period is the amount of units it takes to complete one full wave. And remember for cosecant and secant, this one was cosecant, that one full wave encompasses two U's. So I kind of mapped out one full wave here. You could have done these two instead or these two instead. It doesn't matter as long as you encompass two U's. And that is four units. So we have a period of four units. And then the frequency for cosecant is two pi over the period. So two pi over four, I went ahead and reduced it. I don't think you have to, but I just, I went ahead and did. And then this has a phase shift, phase shift of zero. Remember that cosecant is the reciprocal function of sine. And so if we were to draw sine in here, um, the associated sine function for this one, they would meet, the curves would meet uh, there like that. So this follows the sine function. It's not shifted over to the left or to the right any. So um, zero there. And then if we were to write an equation for this function, since it's cosecant, I'm using cosecant, and then now we just plug in all the pieces. Uh, amplitude goes in the front, I'm gonna do y equals three cosecant, and then frequency goes next, two pi over four or pi over two times x. I had no phase shift and that was it. Nope, uh, plus one, sorry. I was like, there was a vertical shift on this one. It, the midline was plus one. So uh, you could do parentheses here and then the plus one outside, or we could write this as one plus three cosecant two pi over four X or pi over two X. So either of those are correct. Um, just make sure that if you do the plus one on the, back end that you close that parentheses to show that um, it's not inside the parentheses with X, it does matter there. Uh, or it, if it's just easier, just go ahead and put that at the very front. So that's all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to help and I'll see you in the next one.